Hello, my name's Ali, and today um, I'm going to show you some a couple moves for really um, overworked low back. Um, a lot of times, uh, like I even know alignment, and if I do too much and I'm not aware of my core, then um, between pulling weeds, cleaning the house, and picking up my two-year-old, I end up overworking my back. So. Um, my back is hurting right now, so I'm going to show you some stretches that I'm going to do um, to help me feel better. So hopefully it will work for you as well. So you'll come onto your back. And you're going to need a, like a strap. I'm using a dog leash. A yoga strap or a belt is good. So a hard floor is good. Um, soft like on your bed isn't going to be as effective. So you want to be on the hard floor. And what we're working towards is trying to um, just realign the spine. You want to have the natural curves. The natural curves in the back. And so, especially in the low back, a lot of times we're really tight in our butt and we start to round our back or tighten the legs. So I want to first to exaggerate that lumbar curve and do it really slowly, especially if you are hurting. Um, so arching your back and think about rooting your sit bones down, really anchoring the, the sit bones. You also want to root through the shoulders, ground the shoulders. I even like push down, puff up my chest and try to root the shoulders even more. And then just notice your feet touching the earth. Try to be even on the right and left sides of the body. And a couple breaths just to settle. So a lot of times we come onto the floor and we think we want our spine to be straight. But you want to have the natural curve in the low back, the natural curve in the back of the neck. And you get that by grounding through the skull, the shoulders, and the hips. And then you make the SH sound, and that'll tone that deep belly muscle that protects your low back. So keep, try to keep that, and if you need to make that SH sound, to remind yourself to engage that deep belly muscle, just do it whenever you need to. And then bring the heels of your hands to the hip crease, and you're going to push the thigh bones away from you. So keep rooting the shoulders, keep rooting the hips, and push strong. So you want to art, get that natural curve in the low back, and it's okay to exaggerate it, but then engage your belly. So pull the belly muscles down and wide. And just keep breathing. Push the thigh bones away, belly flat and wide. Do that again. So I'm not moving the low back down and keeping it arched, but I'm engaging the muscles of my stomach and that's gonna help realign. So then I wanna try to keep that tone in the belly and just practice using that deep belly muscle. It's really hard, and that's why like making that SH sound can help just find where it is. It's nice, it's really deep. Okay, so you try to keep that, and then just lift your heel off the ground, and you try to lift it from using these core muscles, and it's not a big movement. A lot of times we just move the hip flexor and the leg, but you want to move from the core, and that's what's lifting your heel. And if you're doing it right, you're really, uh, you should feel it deep in that belly. If you don't feel it, Make the SH sound while you do it. And over time, you can start to lift more than just the heel, but you start with the heel so you can really, you know, not do the muscle, the big muscles in the legs that are lifting your foot. You really want it to be from the core. So sometimes over time, you start to lift the toe, but never the whole leg. Just really slow. You try not to shift your weight side to side. And again, you still have that natural curve in the low back. Activate the belly. 
Then from here, take the leg up into the strap. So I'm moving really slow because I am really injured right now. Um, so you're going to take the strap, one on each side. Flex the foot and get really strong in your toes. And I'm bending the knee. So I don't want to have a straight leg and just be like out here with a locked knee. Bend the knee until you can get the ankle roughly over the hip. And then just re-anchor the corners of the body, the both sit bones, both shoulders. And you want to, again, one leg is up, this hip tends to lift up. So try to root this sit bone down just as much as the other one. And then think about that deep belly muscle. So I'm kind of pulling the strap down so I have something to extend my foot into as well. And then another great um, variation for this is bringing the hands behind the thighs and push the thigh bone f uh, away from you. You want to think about moving this thigh bone into the hamstring and that's uh, um, ultimately going to get this femur bone deeper into the hip socket, which is healthier for the back. So you push it. You don't pull the leg towards you. You push the leg away from you and you do it strong and then try to root the shoulder. And then we'll switch sides. So the right foot down, take that left leg up in the strap. And this side's worse for me. So I'm really taking my time. I'm not in a hurry. Spread the toes really strong. Again, bending this knee. Keeping this leg bent too is really is good. A lot of times we'll straighten this bottom leg, but especially if you're working on healing rather than um, just a regular practice, then keep this leg bent. So again, I'm trying to pull. I pull with the strap. I try to pull this whole femur bone down deeper into my hip socket. So I'm trying to root both sit bones. I try to have a natural curve in the low back, nice strong belly, ground through the shoulders. And then I take the hand behind the thigh, push it away. And as you do that, really bring your awareness to the top of the femur bone, that bone that's in your hip socket, and feel it, as you push it forward, feel it settle down towards the earth. Okay, and release that. And the other thing that can be causing back pain is um, tightness in your butt. So getting a, a gentle hip opener here. So we'll go figure four, and you wanna have a really strong foot. Flex the foot, spread the toes. A lot of times people kind of do weird things with their feet. So you wanna do your best to have the ankle and knee in alignment. Spread the toes, karate chop them away from you as you bring the ankle to the thigh. And then here you can do that pushing your the heels of your hands into that hip, the hip crease push away, around the shoulders. And then if you do want a little more, you can bring it, uh, this, interlace your hands around the um, left leg. So a lot of times I like to kind of shift my weight side to side and if you want to play with that, that's good. Just be really slow, especially if you do have some an injury you're kind of working on right now. So keep karate chopping the toes away from you. If you want more of a stretch, you think about moving this right thigh away. Don't push on the knee. If anything, push on the hip down here. 
And you can always stay down with the foot on the floor. That still can be a big hip opener. And we'll do the other side. So left ankle crossing, flex the foot, spread the toes. So when you karate chop the toes away, it kind of brings the knee closer to the body. And that's why some people tend to curl their toes so they can get their knee farther away. But don't do that. Karate chop and then move your knee away just as much as it can go. Heel of the hand if you like that. Push. And then again, if you want a little more, not you don't have to, but if you do, then you pull this right leg in. And I usually can go way in, so I'm just really going easy, taking it slow. <sighs> Making sure to keep this foot strong, work the toes. And slowly, slowly release. And then one more, just you pull the knees into the belly and do a circle around your sacrum. So rolling, try to roll all the way around your sacrum. And again, nice and awareness in the belly, that strong, deep belly muscle. So you try to keep that belly muscle strong, but relax and keep breathing, relax your face. Go the other way. You can even kind of roll more onto this side. It get a little more into that butt muscle or the outer hip. For me, that's that's definitely helping my low back. And then when it's time to get up, just do it really slowly again. So engaging the belly. I'm trying to keep that strong alignment in my low back. Just roll to the side. Keep the belly strong as you come to seated. If you're coming to standing, again, just keep that strength in the belly as you move. Trying not to round too much in the low back. So I hope that was helpful, just a couple stretches um, to help low back pain, overworked, overused low back. Um, thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time. Namaste.